Okay. Time. Could you please point your finger at me like this? Hi. Nice to meet you. I'm Dong Min. Thank you. What we just did was a greeting from E.T. the movie. It is the first physical contact between its two main characters. It's how you and I just made first contact too. This aspect is also important with coffee brewing. To brew great coffee, different components such as cherries, the beans, the water, and the ikimon have to make contacts with one another in the right ways. Also, it's important how contacts are made between the coffee and those you drink it. To create a special cup of coffee, I won't focus on this contact point throughout the process. Are you ready? Let's go. First, contact is speed. I do most of my pouring in the center, so I need a deeper fast water flow and high coffee density in the center. This cone-shaped dripper has a fast flow which highlights the bright flavor of specialty coffee. And when pouring into the center of the coffee bed, the coffee and water quickly come into contact and spread, creating a complex flavor. Also, floral and fruity flavors usually express when the losing time is short. Two days ago, we lost it lightly using hot air to keep the flavor. It took 6 minutes 10 seconds. Since it was a quick process, the melon reaction was an important factor. We bring the beans at a high temperature to control the reaction, starting at 180 degrees and got them out at 115 degrees. Second, contact is optimal. Coffee and water are essentially one, which makes the choice of water crucial. To bring out the bright and lively flavor of this light roasted coffee, I chose soft water with a low level of minerals and 90 ppm. The water has a calcium magnesium ratio of 50 to 25, which creates an optimal condition to preserve the flavor. It softens the acidity and increases the perceived sweetness. And fast water flow can weaken the mouse pit. So, to mitigate the problem and optimize the mouse pit, I decided to use non woven filters. They are similar to planet filters and let effectively extract coffee oil, which gives you a round mouth feel and enhances the flavor. While I prepare the coffee for you, let's go to the third point of contact. Connect. Every coffee makes contact with those you drink it, and the connection starts with the coffee itself. This mountain geisha natural coffee comes from Bukete Heremia region in Panama. It's a shake grown coffee produced at a 1700 meter elevation using biodynamic farming technique. The harvest is small, but just the producer put his heart into it. Although it's natural coffee, its flavor is clean and crisp. To create this flavor, we store it in a tank for a day after the harvest and then ferment it for 48 hours using wild yeast. We dry for a day on African bed with the sunlight and dry for the for 30 days with the sunlight blocked out, which means slowly at a cool temperature. This final just for the light and temperature, add complexity and clarity to the coffee. Now, it's time for you to connect with this coffee. So, I invite you to my brewing process. As said before, my brewing is mostly through center pouring with 18 grams of beans and 235 grams of the water, 1 to 13 ratio. It takes 2 minutes 30 seconds. Let's get the blooming starting with 93 degree water to throw pleasant aroma in a cup. 40 grams of it is enough to hold the puppy bed fully connected with water. I use a medium coarseness appropriate for my brewing tennis flavor complexity. 700 microns using a commandante grinder. For the first spring, I add 50 grams of the water to the center in three small circles. This step brings out the fruity flavor and the honey apple taste of Miss Mountain Geisha, a shaker on coffee produced through biodynamic farming technique. The second brewing is done in the same way. 
50 grams of the water to the center in three small circles. This step brings out the juicy acidity and the bright sweetness, which come from four eight hour fermentation process using wild yeast. For the last brewing, we use a new kettle of water at 60 degrees, sorry, at 70 degrees. The lower temperature will lead to the clean flavor, which comes from the slow, cool drying process. To minimize bitterness and maintain the round mouth feel, I add 95 grams of the water. <laughs> Coffee's almost ready. Before I serve the coffee, let me tell you about the aroma. You are going to enjoy medium intense, apricot, honey, and red flower. Hint of mango. To make the aroma clear, I will close the lid, shake it, and serve you. When you get the coffee, swirl three times, take the aroma twice, and please wait. Excuse me? Please enjoy. Thank you. Are you ready? Please enjoy. Thanks for waiting. Please enjoy. Are you enjoy the aroma? Thank you. Let's talk about the flavor. The flavor is medium intense. When honeyrum, pineapple, sun fruit, mango, and lychee. When cold, peach, yellow plum, and pink grapefruit. The aftertaste is medium intense when honeyrum, red flower, and red currant. When cold, cranberry, honey, and Darjeeling tea. The acidity is medium intense when hot from juicy, mango, and stone fruit. When cold, crisp. Cranberry and pink grapefruit. The sweetness is medium intense when hot from wild honey and cane sugar. When cold, brown sugar and tropical fruit candy. Lastly, mouthfeel is medium intense when hot from silky and round. When cold, round with sparkling. <laughs> the rim of the cup is going to soften the coffee as it touches your lips. So please drink it directly cup after my presentation is over. Starting from a single sip all the way to your mouth, coffee recalls countless contacts and connections through the journey. This mountain geisha was produced by the Kyoto Simprint and is delivered into your cup by my brewing at this very moment. The time you spent together created value and I hope it also connected with you. Thank you. Time!